Hey guys, welcome back to my art channel. If you're new, hi, I'm May, and I do digital acrylic pours and digital fluid art. I've been doing it for about three and a half years now and kind of perfecting my style and figuring out how to make cells. Today we'll be going through what I like to call pop through canvas cells or more colloquial uh, reconstructed cells through Procreate. And hi, this is my first uh, in-person tutorial. <laughs> so hello, and let's get started. So you wanna open your Procreate and we're gonna be making a new canvas. I like to use a canvas size of 5,000 by 3,500 with a DPI of 1,000. I usually do a higher DPI because I like a crisp resolution and I do sell my artwork online. Um, so you do need to have a higher DPI when selling merch and being able to have your images printed on mugs, clothes, and all that fun stuff. So once you have your dimensions put in, you wanna hit create. And I like to shrink my canvas down so we can see all the edges, especially with working with digital fluid art, you wanna make sure you see everything. Like I said, you can work with negative space and do a smaller one, but today we're gonna to be doing a full all over canvas. And feel free to screenshot the screen if you would like to follow along and use this color palette. Otherwise, feel free to use any color palette you like. I use to use um, anywhere between three to six colors I personally find is best, but you can use as many or as little colors as you like. And I tend to use a few dark and a few darks, a few lights, a neutral, and kind of a medium. And you can, when making a digital acrylic pour, you can start with a base, and then you can also then have your layers or your color that you're going to move around on a second layer and play with it and erase areas and have your base on the bottom that way. But today we're going to just solely be using one layer to kind of show how reconstructed cells work. So we're gonna lay down our dark color first. And then we're gonna pick our brush and what brush size we like to use. Now I find to be able to find the right size of brush you like, I like to make sure to have on tools and preferences your brush cursor activated so that way you can physically see the brush size as you're working on the canvas makes it a little easier less guesswork especially with reconstructed cells because you can't really erase them unfortunately so make sure to have your brush cursor on and like i said play with the size i'm going to do 40 percent and i keep the darker color so that way you can kind of push it on the screen and see if you like that size might make it a little bigger and do 50%. That's a good size. And today we're gonna to be using the brush under spray paints and fat nozzle because it creates an interesting pattern with the excess spray splatter of the paintbrush. Actually makes a pretty cool digital acrylic pour. Now I find depending on how you lay your, down your colors is how your reconstructed cells are gonna be popped through. I'm gonna lay down kind of not everywhere, but kind of medium placement. My colors. Like I said, if you want to overlap them, light, dark, use little pressure and harder pressure with your brush to create different shades, which will affect the look of your digital acrylic pour as well and create an interesting effect. And overlapping your colors. And I find once you've laid down all your colors, it's always kind of good to go back in and use that original dark color and pop it around a little bit as well. So I like what I have going on here. And keep in mind when doing the cells, when reconstructing, it's going to pull the original paint you see here is what's going to be pulled up to make the reconstructed cells. So I have a lot of paint and color all over the whole canvas. So those colors are what's going to be shown. If you don't want a lot of colors and you want your cells to be more dark, I suggest having your colors mainly around the edges and pulling them in under Liquify. So that way when you make your cells, the original color is mainly dark underneath. And if you want even more than this, you want to pack on even more color. If you want a little less, pack on a little less color. So now we're going to go into Liquify and shrink your canvas. Now keep in mind with reconstructed cells, the reason why we have our brush cursor activated is so you can kind of see the cell size and you want to make sure to have it under 
reconstruct, but again, we're going to be making a digital acrylic pour first because you need to actually have your paint moved around so that reconstruct will turn it back to this original image in small sections. So I tend to like to start with a high distortion around to 70% and you can either start with a low push size and just push a little bit of it on the screen like so if you prefer that look or if you want a more medium like I said you can push it any which way you want on how you like but I find with reconstruction if you want big cells little cells I personally start with a higher just to kind of get that paint moved around and then I'll move my brush or my push option lower afterwards just to kind of see how I want the paint to move. So again, that's just having fun and moving around and not really liking how it's turning out. Just hit reset and start over. Find my brush was a little too big. So we're gonna go with around 58. And again, the distortion I find kind of helps push those little splatter marks from the spray paint brush in interesting patterns. Lower to distortion and bring the push up a little higher. And then you can really start moving them around and getting those interesting lines of color. And again, I'm not trying to make anything spectacular here. It's just to have a base so that way we can make our reconstructed cells or pop through canvas cells is kind of like how I like to call them because they look like they're popping up through the canvas. And I find using real digital, or not digital, real acrylic pores and going online and using them as a reference and seeing how the paint moves and kind of studying them and how the cells work is great tools and references for your own digital acrylic pores and kind of learning how the paint moves and getting that feel of how it looks on a canvas. And again, you don't have to either. You can kind of just wing it and go nuts and kind of finger paint with it. That's the nice thing about art. It's endless and you can have endless ideas and kind of do whatever the heck you want. Okay. That pink's interesting. I'm not a fan of the brown, as you can see, it got a bit muddy there. But just keep at it till you have something that you like. And if you want to move things larger, just increase your push option at the bottom. my water and yeah it's looking a little interesting again not a fan if you really don't like how a side's looking you can literally just push it off the screen and keep fiddling with the paint till you do kind of find there's too much dark on that side there we go and that's looking pretty interesting so now that we have our base is where we're going to start making the reconstructed cells and these are all under the reconstruct option and keep in mind unfortunately with procreate they don't when you're under liquify they don't have a backspace option other than reset so again you want to play with these don't necessarily make a piece that you're so in love with that if you make a mistake you're gonna be very upset again play with reconstructed cells to get the feel of them because you're gonna make mistakes and want to erase it. And the only way to do that is hit reset and it will erase everything. There's no way to just push one little cell like that. And then there's no other way to get rid of that one cell. You have to reset your canvas, which means you will lose your entire pushed image or your digital acrylic pour as well. So keep that in mind when working with reconstructed cells and the fact that you need to be in liquify. If you go and make your wet image, go out, draw on it, and try and come back in. The paint is now dry in a sense, and you will not be able to reconstruct it. So I like to start with anything kind of under 50%. Smaller the better, because you can always make larger cells. Can't make them smaller. <laughs> so 
So by fine, starting with the medium cells and then working with larger and smaller after is kind of a good way, a good base to start. And then you want to be under reconstruct. I like to do maximum pressure and momentum, but again, feel free to play with them and see how they work and kind of pick anywhere on the canvas and go nuts. And depending on where you pick, if it just happens to be a dark spot, you might not see them right away either and they might not pick up a lot of paint if you put a lot down. And that's where, as you can see here, it's kind of pushing them more in a spray paint pattern than in a cell pattern, probably just because of where we had that original paint. So if you want more of the dark cell that you see up here, you're gonna to wanna to put your paint more on the outside. So that way you kind of remember where your colors are. But I find the randomness of it is kind of fun to work with and seeing what you create. The nice thing with digital acrylic pores and digital fluid art is even though it seems like you have control, it can be very random and very relaxing in that sense and you can kind of just relax and it doesn't have to be anything serious. I think you can make your cells larger and bleed off the canvas. make them really wonky sizes. I find you want to pack them a little close together, at least your first little bundle, because cells do kind of like to group together. But then once you like your placement, you can drop your brush size quite a bit, or brush your push option. <clears throat> and this is where you'll kind of start to get that blow torch. These ones are still quite a bit bigger, just because I'm slowly fading it out to get that more low torch kind of look. And then even smaller, and then just start dotting around the canvas. You can even pack them really close and far away. And the harder you push, the more it will revert back to the original paint that's under the canvas here. If you push it very gently, it will just do it in almost like layers, kind of like you're pushing through the layers. So I like those. Now another thing is like, I like the pink and that the pink is creating those connecting lines for those cells, but you might not necessarily like the fact that the tans and the darker purples and the orange is showing through. So a way to get rid of that and bring yourselves closer together is you wanna use the edge tool. And you want it a little bit smaller than the cells you'll be working around. Next to us, I found 24%. And you want to very gently push on those darker areas. And then you're taking the two sides and you're bringing them together. So you don't want to push too hard because you kind of manipulate your cell and make them look a little wonky. Again, practice makes perfect. As you can see, they're kind of coming together. And the lighter you do it, the more it will push it slowly so you can kind of see how it's coming together. And if you don't like it, fortunately you'll have to kind of hit reset and start over, but the slow, slower is always better. Take your time, relax and have fun with it. Again, you're just following those lines and bringing those cells closer together to create that kind of network pattern. The connector bits. Another thing you can do too is if you really want it to be more pink and solid instead of bringing the cells together, if you preferred the cells, the shapes that they were, you could, once you have everything placed how you liked it, you could back out a liquify and use a uh, airbrush or a brush that has a similar texture and fill it in yourself as well. But I'm starting to like how those look. I find these ones are a little too much pink, so, and I'd like the cell itself to be a bit bigger, so make my cursor a little bigger and just pull the cell outwards and very gently because you're basically bringing the two sides closest together, almost kind of like pinched. I find you can also use the pinch tool, but I find with the edge tool, it keeps it a little more 
uniform. It gives a little bit more of a cleaner look. And yeah, I like how that looks. And those are reconstructed cells. Like I said, you can do, to show you a few different ways here, but that's edge, way under reconstruct, under almost 50%, 49. You can do some really big ones. And the bigger you do them, which is kind of interesting, if you just kind of touch the screen, they almost get an edge to it and a depth that almost looks like it's three-dimensional, which is kind of cool. So those are some very large cells. And you can see the darker colors. And I like just to kind of play with them too and see and go everywhere on the canvas and kind of see where the color gets pulled and what it looks like. So it's always fun to play with it first just to see what your color looks like underneath. And you know what you're working with. And yeah, and then again, you can, once you get your bigger ones, shrink your brush down and do those little flyaway ones that you see happening. Like so. And then even tinier and get almost like those blow torchy ones. Those ones I find you want to kind of hold your pencil kind of right upright so you can just push down because if you do it on an angle and you push a little too hard, it will kind of drag the paint and throw it as it kind of just did right there. Yeah, I'll show you an example so you can see a few of it, but if you go on an angle and you push too hard and you throw, it will pull it. So if you don't want that happening, again, you want to kind of be upright and just push very gently and try not to drag your brush everywhere. But yeah, so that's a few examples of reconstructed cells. But yeah, we'll do the pinched option to see what that will look like too, just the difference. Quickly. And again, it does the same thing, but I find in a bit of a different way. It doesn't necessarily work the same way as the edge tool does. It doesn't keep it quite as uniform, but again, as long as you work with it and play with it, it kind of essentially does the same thing as well. And yeah, and that's what the pinch would look like. And there you have it. And those are your reconstructed or pushed through canvas cells, like I, how I like to call it anyway. And I do have other tutorials up on my YouTube channel. If you want to give it a try, I do post trailers that are only about a minute. If you want to look for artwork that I've done in the past that you really are inspired by and would like to recreate those pop through canvas cells and see how more in depth I do them. But these are just kind of the quick and basic ideas that you can kind of go from here and play with. So thanks for watching. And if you do make any digital acrylic pours, tag me. I'd love to see everybody's artwork. And I said, I'll see you guys next time when we create some more art. And thanks for watching. Bye.